Hey guys and welcome to a very special Robocraft missile launcher update video. As you can see in the background we're going to take a look at a couple of my bots. I'm going to go and do some games for you so it doesn't get too boring. While I read through tomorrow's update for us all. So guys, coming tomorrow to Robocraft, the lock-on missile launcher and loads of improvements and fixes. New, the lock-on missile launcher has been added to Robocraft. The launcher can now be purchased from the cube depot for RP or GC. The launcher has a lock-on system which takes two seconds and once locked it can shoot its full barrage of missiles which will move towards their target in the most direct line possible with a slight turning arc. So guys, in other words, you need to make sure you've got direct line of sight. The missiles will turn slightly, up, down, left, right, but if there's a mountain in the way or something else in the way, or a cliff, I'm pretty certain that they will, you know, hit that and not you. So that's good. Missiles can be fired without a lock, but are very inaccurate and unguided. So in other words, just shoot for the hell of it. <laughs> Targets of the missiles will be informed that they're they're being locked onto and will be shown the direction of the enemy so that gives us a chance if we're flyers to perhaps make some evasive maneuvers and get out the way the launcher deals 37,000 damage per missile and can launch up to six missiles at once with a full load so let's do a quick bit of maths uh, if we round that down to 35,000, that's 70,000 for 2, 140 for 4, 210 for 3, plus another 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 222,000 damage if all 6 missiles hit you. So that's a lot of damage, 220,000 damage with a full volley of 6. A full reload isn't necessary before firing, firing again, so missiles can be shot consistently without having to wait for six to be ready. So that's handy guys, you can just drive around, just hold your finger on the button and just shoot rockets off randomly, which is probably what's going to happen a lot of the time. The launcher weighs 34.7 kilos and uses 275 P-flops. So it's roughly the same weight as uh, Mega SMG or Mega Plasma and uses exactly the middle amount of p-flops because a mega smg if i believe correctly is 250 p-flops and a mega plasma is 300 p-flops uh, so this will fit directly into the middle there's been some balance changes as well guys rail damage has been increased across the board yes finally we can actually use rails again now guys and they'll be more effective so the piercer had an old damage of 20,127 and it's now 24,480 so it's got a difference of plus 22%. The penetrator was 24,641, it is now 29,970, sorry, which again is a 22% difference. The decimator had an old damage of 30,190 and has now got a new damage of 36,720. Again, a plus 22% difference. The eraser used to have a damage of 36,998, now has a damage of 45,000, which again is a 22% increase. Now that is very handy guys. I used to enjoy playing the rails but I was really annoyed that I'd shoot at some flyers and they just laugh at me and keep flying towards me and then bomb me because you couldn't you couldn't do enough damage to the flyers um, you know to keep them away from you because once you fired off your six shots that would be it like three blocks maybe would fall off in a gun and they just laugh at you come along and just drop plasma on your head. Aerofoil and rudder health have been normalized relative to their mesh size the new health values can be seen here. Well, heard here, because I'm going to read them to you guys. So this is really good, because I really enjoy playing the bombers. Um, when the last update hit and the pilot seat went, kind of felt that the flyers were no good anymore. Um, then the Tesseract drones came in, and they really weren't any good anymore. Then the Aeroflat came in, 
and then they nerfed the rudders some more and uh, so basically the um, the aerofoils and rudders and flyers weren't very good now I'm a bit gutted because I recently did some garage clearance and I deleted three four of my flyers because they didn't handle very well and they weren't fast enough and now we've had some buffs which means they probably all would still work boohoo cry light a candle for me <laughs> but anyway guys the hawk rudder had a health of 4465 now has a health of 3472 so it's got a 22% decrease in health. The Hawk Aerofoil had a health of 4,871, now has a health of 8,487. So it's had a massive buff of plus 74%, guys. So it's three quarters stronger than it used to be. The Falcon Rudder. Old health, 6,042. New health, 5,015. So that's had a decrease of minus 17. So we're still getting rudder nerfs, but the foils have had a really good buff. The Falcon foil had a health of 6,505. Now has a health of 12,344 making that a difference of plus 90 percent guys so that is basically double the strength it used to be almost that is amazing the eagle rudder had a health of 8108 and the new health is 8294 meaning it gets a plus two percent increase guys the eagle foil had a health of 8,635, now has a new health of 16,587, making a plus 92% increase. So again, pretty much doubled in its health. The Albatross rudder had a health of 10,801. Its new health is 10,801. So no change on the Albatross rudders, guys. The Albatross Aerofoil, however, used to have a health of 11,370, will now have a new health of 23,145, which is a massive, massive plus 104% increase. So that has doubled in health and then thrown in a bit more just for luck so those aerofoils guys are now worth using really i want to see lots of flyers guys it's amazing that is really good um i'm going to be building some flyers i'm going to be building me a missile launcher flyer because well why the hell not but anyway guys we'll continue down improvements aeroflax shots now target the center of the crosshair rather than shooting straight ahead so they're more accurate I never really noticed to be fair, um, all I know is you need to lead your shots and once you learn how far you need to lead your shots as to how far the target is away, you can do pretty well without the crosshair, so that's not really that, that doesn't really seem that good to me or different, but never mind. <laughs> the Mothership's new super advanced AI will now remember if you had mirror mode active before entering a battle so it's still active upon exiting the battle. Yes! No more asymmetric bots where you take off a block on one side and change it for a, you know, a, a gun or a thruster and it hasn't done it on the other side because mirror mode wasn't on. Now that is an absolute brilliant feature. Thank you Freejam. I think the community has been asking for this for freaking probably a year because I've been playing this game for almost a year and I've known for almost a year I've been moaning that the mirror mode becomes disactivated. A coloured strip has been added to the attachment points of Plutonium Towers. Now I can understand why a coloured strip has been added to the attachment points of the Plutonium Towers, but I kind of feel that's made it very, very, very noob friendly, um, or child friendly even. Um, it was... I don't know what to say on this one guys, because 
for me, I, I didn't know about the attachment points, and then once I figured out that you could shoot the attachment points, obviously that's where I shoot now. To give them to actually a coloured strip to show you where to shoot is a bit pointless of having a complete tower. You might as well just have two strips that you've got to shoot. Um, so yeah, that's my feelings on that, guys. I don't think the commu I don't think the community as a whole is going to um, be down with that too much because it's just going to make it far too easy. If you've got a team that doesn't really know how to strip towers very well, um, then you know that's part of the game. You know, you have to learn the game, and maybe in the lower tiers a coloured strip would be good, but if the colour strip's still there at 25k in the top tier, like Battle Class 10, we've there, there's a serious problem with the game. Because <laughs> you should know how to take a Protonian Tower by then. Uh, anyway, continuing. Major optimizations have been made to improve FPS while robots are taking damage or receiving healing. That's good. Improve the profanity filters detection. Ah, oh, bugger. Ha, <laughs> you thought I was going to say something else. Robots in single player now display the robot's name rather than its creator's name. Well, I don't really play single player, so I can't really comment on that, but that's good. You know, so it displays which robot you're shooting at, so if it's a really nice looking robot, you can go and have a look in the CRF and download it for yourself. Robots in single player will no longer have their weapons locked in awkward directions. Again, can't say I noticed because I don't play single player, but um, for those of you that do play single player, I'm I'm hoping that will be a welcome change for you. Certain parts of the Mars maps have been have had their shadowing improved to remove the twitching effect. Can't say I noticed that either, guys, but I'm just reading through their patch notes for you and giving you my little bit of feedback. <laughs> On to the fixes! Fixed a bug on the login screen that could cause infinite loading when hammering enter after inputting an incorrect password. Fixed an issue causing profanity to be filtered for the person typing it when it should only be filtered for other players. <laughs> so you can't swear at yourself. Um, fixed a bug which called, could cause robots with disconnected parts to continue functioning as though everything was still connected. Ghost blocks. Do -do -do -do. Illuminati confirmed. Fixed a bug which caused other players' wheels to appear to lock in the opposite direction when that player is turning. Yay, no more following a megabot that turns its wheels left and goes right. Yeah, that did happen guys and I saw it quite a lot. <laughs> Fixed a bug which caused the RP and GC earned from sending your robot on the upload robot menu to appear to be 30. Well nobody buys my robots, so I can't say I ever noticed that. So if you want to buy one of my robots guys, Come and check Frown and Lizard on the CRF. I've got the two that are in the gameplay at the back. They're, they're up. Come and have a look. Here. Fixed a number of connection issues with the corner slope, which were blocking legal connections. Can't say I noticed that, but that's good. It's always good to have fixes in the builder. Fixed a mirror mirroring issue with the Electro Plate F left. Now guys, I would have showed you this one the other day on my little Medic Leaper Insect build. That was the one where you would select Electroplate left and you would end up with a spiked shield on the right. Completely facing the wrong direction um, and if you didn't have those shields you were buggered, basically. I have those shields but it's beside the point, it should never have been an issue. <laughs> Fix the texture on the inside of the Electro Shield eye component. Can't say I noticed that, but that's still good to have fixes in the builder. Fixed a bug which caused text to be undeletable if chat is opened before entering the CRF. Fixed a bug which could cause a player to be stuck in a platoon when their invite is declined with decline all. Yes, I have had a few problems with platoons, um, and the guys I normally platoon with, we all seem to have had the same problem. One of us would start a platoon, nobody could join. Um, then somebody else would start a platoon and invite everyone and then nobody could accept any invites. There's all sorts of bugs and problems with it at the moment. Fixed a bug which could cause the player's camera to be far higher than it should when using mech legs. Fixed the misaligned scroll bars in the cube depot and inventory. Um, can't say I noticed. Can't say I noticed. Fixed a bug which caused walker legs to not align correctly with the floor under certain circumstances. So hopefully the legs will actually grip onto the floor this time, rather than just like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> F 
fixed some further memory leaks. Woohoo! Good old free jam. You're finally fixing your memory leaks, boys. Fixed some misalignments on the link with Steam prompt on the login screen. Um, I don't actually use Steam to log in. I log in through. Well, I've got. I use. I log in with my Robocraft thing, not my Steam account, should I say? But it does run through Steam. Fixed an issue with the BA timer, which caused the numbers to shrink and expand depending on the numbers shown. Okay. Don't play BA myself, but I'm sure that was a problem. Fixed the collision on the left side of the Rhino mask so it's more accurate. I need to get that mask. I pretty much have all the others. Fixed the collision on certain rotors as they were able to clip through armor cubes. Ooh. Fixed some mirrored collision inconsistency with high level hovers. Fixed an issue stopping the not enough GC dialogue from appearing when purchasing a cosmetic. Fixed an issue which occasionally caused players not to see the Tesla impact effect when being hit. Good, because I think that actually happened to me a couple of times. I was hit by a bot and I was like, what? I'm dead. Um, you know, and then you, it goes to the camera and you realise it was actually a Tesla bot that hit you, but there was no impact. Uh, no sound. Fixed a bug letting players lower than level 50 use coloured text. Fixed various graphical issues relating to the two minute lever menu. Fixed a bug which caused platoon members to get stuck in the platoon if a member leaves a platoon while queuing. Fixed the text for the left mouse button and right mouse button descriptions in the keybinds menu. Fixed the order of wheels in a cube depot and inventory. Yeah, he fixed a bug which caused an incorrect error to be shown when attempting to add someone set as not accepting friend requests. Fixed the texture of the Mark III and Mark IV SMGs so they now have the name markings on the, both sides of the gun. So guys, this sounds like a really good update. Um, I personally cannot wait. What normally happens is the servers will go offline at 10 o'clock UTC, which is 10 o'clock UK time. They are normally down for, I want to say three, sometimes four hours. They might come back online and then go offline. Sometimes they have issues. They might come online and stay online. But hopefully by 1600 uh, UTC, on the 4th of February 2016, we should all have access to the lock-on missile launcher, some nice new buffed aerofoils, and a, wow, the amount of weapons we're getting, guys, is just amazing. I, I don't know what to build. I really don't know what to build. But if you've enjoyed the gameplay, and if you've enjoyed me reading through these patch notes for you guys, if you can click that like button for us helps me out, helps the channel out, and shows that RoboCraft is a popular game and that these videos are popular. If you've got any comments, suggestions or questions, if you want to drop them down below, I will do my best to get back to you. But until the next time guys, and we get to play with a lock on missile launcher, see you later.